The first place Zionists picked to have their homeland was in Uganda, Africa. And they didn't say to the Ugandan government, this land is ours. God gave us this land and it's ours. They just said, we'd like to have a place to live. Uh, would you give us part of Uganda so we can, we'll call it Israel. And the Ugandan government thought about it and they said, no, we've decided, no, it's not going to work out. Go someplace else. And they even picked a part of Texas, one of the last places they picked before they went into Palestine. They have many different places they kept trying to set up a homeland here and there and everywhere. And then they finally figured it out, and they talked with the Lord Rothschild, and Lord Rothschild said yes. And so he was the Lord. They went to the Lord, and the Lord said, yes, I will give you a place to live. And so the Lord Rothschild said to go to, uh, go to the one place in the world that is the most uh, uh, docile country in the world, go to Palestine. Those people are just farmers. Go in there and just rape them. Just go in and take everything. And tell them God sent you. That, you know, nobody's going to argue with that. If the Lord sent you, then, then that's that. So just go in there and take over the country, pile in there with tanks and guns and machine guns, and pile over into their country and tell them the Lord sent you. The most important part of this whole story has been missing since day one, and that is that Israel is a creation of the Masonic Order, British Freemasonry. The Masonic Order created Israel, period. And created it for a political reason, so that eventually there will come a day when, if they continue, if the Masonic Order continues to publicize the idea that uh, the Lord is with the Jewish people, the Jews are the God's chosen people, that's all Masonic folklore, and none of it is based on factual truth, none of it. And today, as I told you before, today in Israel there are many professors and teachers, archaeologists, paleontologists, scientists, who are writing books saying that there was, in point of fact, no ancient Israel ever existed. It's a story that has no basis in fact whatsoever. There was no ancient Israel ever. It never existed. There was no King Solomon mm. and King David and King the kings and queens and all of these wonderful names of the great prophets and all of these people that we see in the Old Testament and the New Testament. None of it is history. It's all made up by secret societies and fraternal orders in Europe which seek to establish some sort of a world government based on the idea that it is God's will and we wouldn't want to fight against the Lord. So we don't want to fight against God and, and, his, and his divine will. So therefore we all need to shut up and just accept what the British Freemasonry has given us. They have given us what we call Israel. Isis, Ra, and El. Israel. The three names of the sun god in the ancient Middle East. So... You need to keep in mind, Israel is a product of Freemasonry, period. It is a Masonic creation, period. And this whole idea of a reestablishment of the Temple of Solomon. Right now, we're hearing a lot of information about the, you know, they're going to reestablish. Nobody is telling you who is going to reestablish. Who? Where is the money coming from? Who's going to back it up and who's going to make it happen? All we're told, all we're given to, to understand is that somehow or another, they're going, somebody is going to reestablish ancient Israel and reestablish the, the Temple of Solomon. And Solomon's Temple is going to be reestablished. And then you think, well, by who? Who's got the money? Who's going to do that politically? Who? Then you find out the whole of the entire uh, operation for the reestablishment of the Temple of Solomon is a Masonic order mm -hmm. headed by the Rothschild money and the British Masonic Fraternities is an incredible story that's connected to 9-11, it's connected to all kinds of nefarious stuff going on in the world today that America is involved in, that Europe is involved in, and have no idea in the world that it's a Masonic movement. The Chief Justice of the Israeli Court today is referred to as a Nazi, N-A-S-I, where Nazi means a precedent. And this is why we have a president in the United States. We have a president of corporation. It goes back to the word Nazi, N-A-S-I. The dictionaries will tell you there's a better spelling of N-A-S-I. It's N-A-Z-I. I don't write the dictionaries. I'm just reading them. Go back and see the difference and the connections, I should say, between N-A-S-I and N-A-Z-I. Now you're just now beginning to find a real dark connection between what you call Judaism today and Israel today and the Nazi party. There is a very definite connection. And if you go back to the foundation of what we call Israel, goes back to sun worship in the ancient Israel, there were people who were worshiping the sun. They're still today worshiping the sun. Right. The, name of, uh, the name of the God of Israel is, is, is so holy, we are told today, that the name of God is so holy that you cannot use that name in public. You cannot use that name. Right. It's too holy. But there is a substitute name that you can use if you want to talk about the, the God of the Hebrews. There's a substitute name, and that is Tetragrammaton. 
the Jews will know what I'm talking about. Tetragrammaton is the name of God. It's a substitute name. That's not the real God's name. That's a substitute name that you can use. And so the word is tetragrammaton. Tetra, which is four, the letter four. Then gramma, which is a letter like A, B, C, and D. Those letters are called gramma. And so tetragrammaton is four letters, tetra, gramma, aton, A-T-O-N, aton. Aton, go look it up in the dictionary. Aton was the sun god of Egypt. The most important sun god of all of Egypt was called the Aton. This is why they always, on any synagogue, you will see on the on the altar in a synagogue, you will always see the name of the god that's called the Tetragramma Aton. It's the four letters of the god of the sun in, in Egypt, the Aton, and it's always inside of a sunburst. This is why you see the sunburst used by the by the Nazis, which was a swastika in a circle. The swastika, we know, goes back to the symbol for the ancient sun god of Egypt. There was no 12 tribes of Israel. They never existed. So therefore, when you hear people talking about the 12 tribes of Israel, know that what they're talking about is Knights Templar Masonic Astrology, dealing with the Zodiac. Mm. The Zodiac is the basis for the 12 signs of the Zodiac, became the 12 brothers of Joseph, the 12 apostles, the 12 signs of, of Israel, the 12 great prophets. Everything in the Bible, Old Testament, about Israel is in 12s. Why? Because Israel is based, the whole story of Israel is based on astrology, the 12 signs of the Zodiac. That's that's why Jesus, another reason why Jesus is said to have been born of a virgin, because one of the 12 signs of the zodiac is Virgo, Virgo the virgin. That is where we get the idea that Jesus was born of a virgin. Nobody is born of a virgin. We're talking about astrology, astrological story that the Knights Templar Masonic Lodge has given to the world. They've taken from the ancient world, the ancient astrological stories, and brought them into the Western world and called it Christianity and Judaism. So that Christianity and Judaism is nothing more than a Masonic story that was dreamt up during the, I think, probably the 6th, 7th, 8th, and 9th, 10th century A.D. So that the whole of ancient Israel, the whole of, uh, history of ancient Israel was dreamt up by a Masonic order and out of Europe under the Vatican to give the Vatican a, 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 a platform from which to work and say that they were, you know, Christianity was the outgrowth of a religion started by Jesus in Israel. There was no ancient Israel. Therefore, there was no ancient religion. The whole thing was dreamt up by the same people who dream up the movies for us today and tell us all these wonderful stories of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade and Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark and the Temple of Doom. All these ideas are all coming out of the ideas of people who work in the Western civilization and motion pictures and television and entertainment industry. There is no history to any of it, period. It was dreamt up in the A.D., not B.C. It's not a B.C. religion. We're told in the Bible that God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. His only begotten son means there's only one. So anytime you confront sun worship anywhere in the world, it's talking about that one thing that comes up in the morning for all of us for thousands of years. It's called the sun, S-U-N. And and the word S U N is often confused with S O N. This is why your boy, your, your if you have offspring, you have a male offspring. He's your boy, and he is the light of your life. We say he is your son. He lights up your life, and he will continue to carry on your name and your life and your presence on the earth will be continued with him. He will be the one who will continue your name and your presence on the earth when you are gone. He is the light of your life. This is why Jesus is called God's son, the light of the world. Because the Son is the light of the world. And he is your risen Savior. That's exactly what it does. Every morning on the earth, it rises. About 5.30 in the morning, it rises. So it is your risen Savior. And what do you mean risen Savior? Well, if the sun doesn't rise, it's going to get real cold and real chilly. We're not going to have food to eat. Our energy will run out somewhere along the line. The rising sun is a symbol for a Messiah, for the one who has come back to bring life to us. He's come back to bring life. Why? Because he went south every year and dies in December. Up here in December and January and February, it's freezing cold. So for us in the Northern Hemisphere, God's Son, the light of the world, has died. You have uh, December 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. The sun it hits the lowest point in the southern sky and does not move northward or southward. It just stays on the same degree for three days. So the ancient people said anything that was moving all year long and it dies between 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, it doesn't move on the sundial. It must be dead. So God's Son dies for three days. Then on the 25th, the sun moves one degree northward. Therefore, anything that was dead for three days and is now moving is now born again. It's now come back to life. 
And now, three months later, three months later, 90 degrees and 90 days later, it is now crossing over, coming back to the northern hemisphere, and it's crossing over the equator. So the ancient people celebrated the sun coming across the equator, and they called it the Passover. The Jews celebrate what we call the Passover. The sun is passing over the northern, uh, into the northern hemisphere. It's passing over the uh, equator into the northern hemisphere, bringing out spring. Why? Because it was dead in the winter, but he is springing back to life. So we call it spring. He was a lion of the tribe of Judah in summer, and then he was falling. He was getting weaker, and he fell, so we call it fall. And then he died in December, and now he's coming back, crossing over the equator, so it's now the spring. And the spring was always associated with the with the constellation of the zodiac, the constellation of Virgo, the virgin, so God's son is born of a virgin. The entire story is an ancient astrological astrology story of how our solar system works. The entire subject of Christianity is based on sun worship, the swastika. This is why Christianity was so big on supporting Christianity, supporting the Nazis. The Vatican supported the Nazi movement in Germany. Germany made, uh, Hitler made connections with the Vatican and swore to support the, the, uh, the Jesuits. The Jesuits were operating by, uh, behind the scenes in Nazi Germany and the Vatican was supporting Adolf Hitler. It's an incredible story of the connection behind the Jewish people, the, the, the German people, the actual history of Europe and the actual history of the world we live in. Scientifically, that all the planets in our solar system are hollow at the core. They have to be hollow. The inner earth uh, story about the inside of the earth is a whole universe, and we are actually living on the inside of the earth, and that the earth is hollow, just as all the other planets are also, and why they have to be hollow. According to scientific investigation, they have to be hollow. It has to be hollow because of experiments that have been done with sound waves in the earth, and that, you know, the earth itself is not molting, a molting lava at the center at all. That is just a, it's just a cover story that has no basis in scientific fact at all from scientists around the world that the earth is actually hollow and that it has gotten great reviews from all kinds of universities and, and scientists and, and uh, researchers on the subject and that it very well could very well be true because of the scientific stuff he was talking about that proves the earth is hollow.